All right, so I guess I'm um, ready to get started. Um, anybody who attended my presentation yesterday knows that we are off to a terrific start uh, because the actual PowerPoint presentation has come up there, or the open office presentation. Yesterday I spent 10 minutes getting that done, so yes. <laughs> Yay to not fail. Um, okay, so I am, uh, my presentation is uh, Breaking Bluetooth by Being Bored. Um, my name is Ronan. And this is DEF CON 2010 slash 18. So the title comes from the, um, I, uh, my research. I'm a graduate student. I'll talk about that in just a second. But the, uh, the title comes from, I, I feel like my best ideas, hacking wise, almost always come when I'm incredibly bored. So like math class is awesome. Long drives are great. Uh, uh, airplane rides. I, I actually developed one of these tools last year uh, on the flight to DEF CON um, because you know, what are you going to do in the air? So uh, I feel like, yeah, so that's the, uh, the reason behind the title. Uh, about me, I'm a graduate student at Virginia Tech. Um, my, my thesis is actually on Bluetooth security. So these are a couple tools I've developed um, while doing my research, um, but it's a much broader scope of things. And uh, my website where all this stuff is going to be posted is hackfromacave.com. I'm graduating soon, looking for a job. I had to do that plug. I'm sorry. Shameless plug. So if, if, this, if this goes well, which already started off well, uh, see me afterward. Moving on to the important stuff. Bluetooth. I'm going to give just a, a brief over. I'm sure most people here know if you're in this talk because you're interested in Bluetooth. But Bluetooth is a, a short range technology. So Wi-Fi generates a lot of power. The Bluetooth is supposed to be, um, basically they call it a cable replacement. Uh, it's low power, um, designed perfectly for smart, uh, for like smartphones or PDAs. Um, it creates an ad hoc Pico net. So while most of us end up pairing just two devices, you can actually pair more than that in the little Pico net and have devices communicate with each other. But most of the time you're pairing a headset to a single, uh, like a smartphone or something like that. But it can do more. And it's a very uh, highly growing technology. Um, the uh, Bluetooth website, and this was a couple of years ago actually, I think 2006, posted that there are over uh, 1 billion Bluetooth devices um, in the world right now, or Bluetooth en enabled devices. So that's a little, uh, a little bit of Bluetooth. Now we're going to the fun stuff. So part of um, how Bluetooth communicates is they have a Bluetooth profile. Um, you're probably very familiar with it through the access point side of things. Wi-Fi access points have a very similar style uh, where you have a device address, which is the MAC address. You have a device class in this case, which uh, describes um, what the device is. So it, it tells you if it's a phone or if it's a phone slash smartphone. It gives you a little bit of information about the device and the device name can be anything you want it to be. Um, so cloning that information is doable. Um, and this isn't something that I created. This has been you know, done years in the past. But uh, all you have to do is, you know, the, the first two, the class and the name, easy to do. Uh, the other one, the device address, you have to have some certain chipsets. The CSR chipsets are great. Um, you scan for a device, you get it, you can clone it. Um, and, uh, or you could change your profile. It's the same as like Mac spoofing. So if you ever do Mac spoofing, you do the same thing where you generate a new Bluetooth profile and now you've obf obfuscated um, who you are or what your device is. So the, uh, previously the method for doing this was just manual. I mean, um, so you'd have to scan for a device. So you have to manually change settings. So I'd created Spooftooth as a way to automatically do a lot of these things, and it does a, a little bit more. So it's great for obfuscation, um, you, uh, or uh, impersonations. <laughs> you can actually pretend to be somebody else. Or uh, something I didn't really intend when I, I uh, wrote it was actually to uh, ob observe um, devices in range and actually log that. So I'm going to go through a couple of the different modes that Spooftooth has right now. Um, the first one is a basic scan. So what it's doing is it's using the, uh, the dash I. The HCI0 is um, like a WLAN for everybody who's Linuxy and does IF config. This is H HCI config and it's got the same kind of thing. So that's the interface. Um, and it's scanning and dumping it to the log. So basically just scanning the local area and dumping everything to the log. Um, I should have mentioned this before. I forgot to. Bluetooth has two modes, uh, discoverable and non-discoverable mode. It will function in both. And this is, this is the key for the, the securing it. Um, you want to have it in non-discoverable mode. The only reason to have it in discoverable is for initial pairing. 
So you want the two devices to connect and once they know about each other, they have the information. They don't need to, you know, scan for each other after that. So then you turn the device into non-discoverable. So this only finds devices in uh, discoverable mode. It's not like if you might be familiar with the tool Redfang um, if you're a big Bluetooth hacker um, which tries to find devices that are in non-discoverable mode. This is only for discoverable mode devices. Uh, okay, so moving on to mode 2. Mode 2 is actually just a randomly generated profile. So you really want to obfuscate and you don't want to actually have to think about anything. You just type the dash R flag and it creates you an entirely new profile for your device. Um, an Easter egg that I didn't actually put in the documentation kind of on purpose because I you know, wanted to release something at DEF CON. Uh, if you change from the dash lowercase r to dash uppercase r, I have a list of all kinds of uh, science fiction names instead of normal names. The, the previous one took the common most, uh, the, the top 100 first and last names and generates it from that. This will take, you know, your favorite science fiction characters so you can be Yoda's phone or Malcolm Reynolds peripheral or Bender Bending Rodriguez's audio video device. So now you know. Uh, mode three. Um, I have to remember. Oh, this uh, this mode is where you actually get to specify the information you want to uh, change your device information to. So this is a little more of the manual side of things. So new name, uh, the device address, and the device class. Um, not all, you can't just put anything for the device class. I mean, you could and it will just say unknown. Um, so you, if you're going to put something in there, you know a little bit how, uh, how the device class works, which I'm not going to really go into too much today. Um, mode 4 is, oh, to load a uh, previously a log scan. So if you want to scan, save for later, log it in, select, uh, make one of the selections and then clone that device later on, you can do that. And the last one is for, is the incognito mode. Um, you can have spoof tooth randomly generate a profile every X number of seconds. So if you don't want to be seen, <laughs> you can keep changing your profile. This will mess up persistent connections. So don't think you're going to be connected to something and keep changing that. Uh, it will mess it up. But if you're just running these scans or whatever, it will change your information. Um, uh, yeah, every, this one's set to 10 every 10 seconds. So this is what the interface looks like. Um, pretty straightforward. It will, uh, you run the scan, you specify the device, it pops up with this menu. It will list all the devices there. Um, I'm not that great with the interface programming so far. So instead of having nice little, it, it's uh, similar to how Kismet, the, the menu interface is for Kismet, except I know a lot less. So instead of having nice little arrows and stuff, I, you have to type in characters. So sorry about that. Maybe in a future version it will be a little more slicker interface. So uh, yeah, that's showing you uh, four of the scans. You can see there's a couple pages at the bottom. So you just uh, previous, next, and it'll show the rest of the scans, which I have obfuscated um, people's names and uh, the classes, or the, sorry, the address uh, in this slide. But we'll show you real quick a live demo of who's in this room. All right. Can you guys hear me clicking? Is that really loud out there? It sounds really loud here. Okay. This is actually, I don't know if it's going to pick up, it might pick up stuff up here. Because actually I'm not hooking it up to a long range device. So uh, Bluetooth has um, three different classes. Yeah, okay. Uh, popped up, done. Um, one thing to note, uh, so I, I'll go for the class first. Uh, the class of devices, there's three different ones, one meter, 10 meter, 100 meter. Those are somewhat accurate numbers. Um, so if you're looking to do anything with Bluetooth, you want to get a class one because that's the longer range. So uh, Bluetooth scanning for this, uh, you see that the, um, uh, actually no, all these got their names. Sometimes uh, the, the scans, they have an initial scan and then a follow up. So you can see under, um, I think it's four, yeah, device four, it says unknown. What? Oh. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, that's gonna, is that a little better? I know it's all blur and it's hard to see. I mean, it's not, it's gonna mess up the menu if I do it any bigger, so sorry about that. Um, you can kind of see it's mostly a blur, but uh, if you notice, is it gone now? It was. Uh, number, uh, number four uh, changed, the name changed from unknown to red team. Man, I'm getting a lot of stuff in here. I figured there'd be more paranoid people. <laughs> 
it doesn't isn't picking up very far. Um, so uh, the device, the scanning for Bluetooth, uh, the initial scan s detects the device based on the MAC address and then does a follow-up scan for the name. So some of the times, if you're you know if you're using this to do something like war driving, um, you will need to be in an area where you're actually going to have a persistent amount of time with the device that you're scanning. Um, you can, if you want to capture that information, because it it takes uh, ten to uh, ten seconds to a minute to complete a scan. Um, the initial scan is actually very very quick, but the follow-up scan for the name takes a long time. So if you notice that things change on there or that that you're not getting the name, that that's the reason why. So it's just this all that this only works with discoverable devices. Sorry, he asked if it was just uh, with discoverable devices. This is only works with discoverable devices. Um, through this, I've actually started a, a, another project called the Bluetooth Profiling Project. Um, I don't. It's similar to if anybody's familiar with Josh Wright, he's doing a, a very similar project, um, collecting a lot more information on specific devices. I'm only looking at a little bit. Um, so what this uh, project is, it, it, it's trying to map um, the MAC address range of Bluetooth devices. So um, for those who aren't familiar. Uh, each type of device, every manufacturer um, gets their own. I thought I had in the slide. I forget exactly what it's called. But basically, it's the, the first six uh, characters in the MAC address are, um, are uh, manufacturer specific, and then the rest of them are you know randomly given to the devices. So if you can uh, figure out so and and that range is the same on all devices of a particular type. So if you can get the range of those. By you know you keep scanning and you find that that whatever type of phone and uh, you see oh well there's a pattern here I see that all these types of phones have you know between this and this then you can use something else um, to uh, to uh, oh it'll help out with other projects actually I'll talk about that in just a minute so right now I've collected about 1,500 um, devices which it's it's is surprising it really is surprising how many devices are out there in discover mode because they really shouldn't be. Um, I listed about a thousand of them on my website right now. I'll try to get more. Um, yeah, so actually I just went into a, this a little bit more than uh, on, the, on the previous slide. So uh, yeah, using Red Fang, as I mentioned, uh, Red Fang uh, finds devices in non-discoverable mode by attempting connections essentially. Um, so it has to run through the entire list and it takes forever. Like you couldn't actually run the whole gambit. And I don't know what the number is. I don't want to quote it, but it's you know years and years and years and years. So this will help narrow that down. If a device, if only you know a thousand models of a certain device are made, and you can get that range, well, then you have a lot higher than whatever the the MAC range, the possibility of MAC ranges is. Um, the other thing is to um, match the model uh, with the uh, the address. Um, yeah, we'll talk about a little more of the research. A uh, big part of it that I've discovered is actually the disclosure of sensitive information. Um, I feel like a, a lot of these, a lot of people don't realize what's being disclosed by the name of their uh, Bluetooth-enabled device. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we went through this um, just a minute ago. Uh, the that's right, the OUI. That was the number I was looking for. Um, this this is the sensitive one. So a lot of them are, are giving out things like the the first name, um, the nickname, uh, location, device model. I've seen things like uh, URLs actually in the name because people name the computer the same name as its URL. So then you uh, you can see it that way. Um, all kinds of stuff that you know I'm sure they don't know that that's the name of it or that anybody walking by can just get that information. But uh, my findings are about. 30% of Bluetooth devices that I scanned gave away an individual's first name. And that's, you know, that's just me scanning through them. I might not recognize a name off the bat, but uh, that's, you know, roughly it. Uh, about 20% give out last names, um, locations. Uh, the device model, I consider that sensitive information only for um, exploitation purposes. So if you know what the device is, then you can target your attacks. So that uh, that's you know, but I understand naming it that way. I'm not saying don't name the device, whatever. But it is possibly sensitive information if people are going to try to exploit a particular device. If you change the name to something else, uh, 